Hello everyone, my name is Monica Bhushan and today we are starting lecture number 10 of Numerical Method. Okay, so in today's class we are going to see Lagrange's Interpolation Method and Lagrange's Inverse Interpolation Method. Okay, so till now we have covered Newton's Forward Interpolation Method, Newton's Backward Interpolation Method and Newton's General Interpolation Method. Okay, so the question is when we have already Newton's uh, many uh, interpolation method, so why we have to study another interpolation method, correct? So what we have discussed in Newton's interpolation methods that when the data points are equally located, okay, then we use Newton's forward and backward interpolation method and when the data points are unequally located, then we go for Newton's general interpolation method and we sometimes call it Newton's divided difference method also and Lagrange's interpolation method is also same as Newton's general interpolation method. So if I talk about advantage of Lagrange's interpolation method so this is uh, I can say that Lagrange's interpolation method is much easier okay to understand and to explain and the property of Lagrange's interpolation method is that when data points are equally or unequally located in all cases we can use Lagrange's interpolation method okay here we don't have to worry about the distance between the data points and these things what we are discussing right now we have already covered right what are the data points and what are these things okay so have to study one more method which is Lagrange's interpolation method but basically Lagrange's interpolation method is theoretically used okay we generally we use Newton's interpolation method only okay and the reason is Newton's interpolation method is computationally fast and we can even add more data points in that method okay and if you will see the formula of Lagrange's interpolation method here if we manually if we are doing the calculation then the chances are there to have the errors in the calculation practically Newton's interpolation method is much more used but but fine we have to study Lagrange's interpolation method also so it's always better to have more than one method to solve any question one advantage of Lagrange's method is what we have Lagrange's interpolation method and Lagrange's inverse interpolation method. We don't have any complicated formula or method to go for inverse interpolation method. Okay, we'll see those things here. Okay, so this is Lagrange's formula for interpolation. Y naught is fx naught. That means x is what? x is independent variable, fine. And then y depends on x, fine. Y is function of x and different and different instances or different arguments are there that means x naught so if x naught is nothing but y naught similarly function of x1 is y1 and so on okay fine so these are the set of values of a known function which is y is fx okay now we are not worried about whether they are equally located or not that means the interval is equal or interval is unequal we have the same formula and we can use this Lagrange's formula for interpolation. Fine. What is the formula? Y is fx. Fine. And the formula looks little lengthier. But if we will go into details of this formula, so this is very easy to write down. Okay. So here is Lagrange's inverse interpolation formula. So the formula is straightforward. What we are doing here, we can interchange the role of x and y. Okay. So here x and y we have just interchanged in the previous formula and then this is called as Lagrange's inverse interpolation formula. How we are writing formula we will be seeing in the question. So here are the questions which we have to solve. So the very first question is what? Given u0 is 707, u2 is 819, u3 is 866 and u6 is 966. Compute u4 using Lagrange's interpolation formula. So straightforward they have given you that use Lagrange's interpolation formula and then give the answer of u4. Okay, so this question I have taken because, because sometimes they ask these type of questions also in the exam. They are not very straightforward. They will be writing down that at x equals uh, this value, y is this much. So how to solve it? This u0 is what? You will see that u0 is the function of x and y. That means if I write down u0 is 707, this means what? 
this means that at x equals 0 okay at x equals 0 y is 707 and then similarly u2 will be what if u2 is written 819 that means at x equals 2 okay at x equals 2 y is 819 fine so similarly they have given you these two values also and they are asking that what is u4 what is u4 that means u4 is what u4 is at x equals 4 what is the value of y they are asking they could have given you this data also in the tabular form x is 0 then y is 707 x is 2 then y is 819 they can give you this type of question also that is much easier to understand but if they are asking in this fashion then you have to understand that they are actually asking the same thing but in different way so they are asking to use Lagrange's interpolation formula that means straightforward at x equals 4 we need to know what is the value of y so we are going to see this question so the same thing what we have discussed just now this is the data what they have provided us now we have to find the value of y at x equals 4 okay so how to use this Lagrange's interpolation formula so for that we have seen that there are different terms but how many terms will be there so the data set actually says that how many terms will be there we have one set second set third set and fourth set that means total four terms will be there in your in your formula okay fine so that is sure that there are four terms but each term will have which all values that we are going to see so how we are writing down this uh, formula we first we will be writing down just x minus x okay uh, in the numerator also in the denominator also fine but how many times we will be writing down x minus x x minus x so it depends on x n that means here your x n is what x n is x 3 the value of n is 3 okay so that means three times we will be writing down x minus x x minus x x minus x and even in the denominator also okay in the denominator also you write down the same thing fine okay now and this way we are going to write down four times we discussed no there will be four terms so if you will start with writing this way later on you will be understanding the formula then you don't have to write in this fashion fine so four terms are written down now what we are going to write here so this x will be as it is very first x will be as it is in the numerator okay and the second x we will be writing down with the data given is from x0 till x3 so x0 in the first term okay or you can say that or you can say that 0th term this x0 we will not be writing here we will be starting with x1 this is your x1 x2 x3 okay and then so x1 x2 x3 again in the denominator also write down x1 x2 x3 fine and then where this x0 has gone so you write down this x0 here okay so in the denominator only you write down x0 and then similarly you write down here y0 the denominator all are x0 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 here it is your y0 fine now in your second term what you are going to write down the previous one will be x only okay and the second one will be what you are going to start with x0 till x3 okay but this is your first term so you will not write down x1 here you will write down x0 then x2 and then x3 similarly in the denominator also x0 x2 and then x3 okay and this x1 has gone actually in the denominator so this is your x1 similarly this is your y1 okay now the same way you can write down the third term also so this term is for your x2 so you will write here x minus x0 x minus x1 and then x minus x3 similarly the denominator also 0 1 3 and then x2 will be in the denominator so x2 and then similarly this is your y2 here also you must be knowing this is your 0 1 2 because this is your third term so you are writing down here also 0 1 2 and then this x3 will be in the denominator similarly this is your y3 okay so this is totally illogical but you can uh, memorize this formula in this fashion okay so now what we are going to do now nothing we just have to put the values here instead of x1 you are going to write 2 instead of x2 you are going to write 3 and then x3 will be your 6 similarly in every places okay this x0 will be 0 you just have to put all those values y0 y0 is your 707 what you are going to replace x with 
you are going to replace x with 4 so that you will come to know that what is your y so instead of x you are going to write 4 in all places okay instead of x you are going to write 4 so it will be what 4 minus x1 is 2 4 minus 2 so very first term is your 2 if you will see here yeah this is your 2 and then you have just put all those values and then you have done the calculation you got the answer so just write down the formula properly and then you just put the values and you will get the answer okay so we'll see the second question so apply lagrange's formula inversely okay fine so they have given you that you apply lagrange's inverse formula to find a root of the equation fx equals 0. Okay. So the equation given to you is what? fx equals 0. Fine. And you have to find the root. You have to find the value, the value which satisfies this equation. Fine. No, that is only called as root. Given that if 30 is minus 30, if 34 is minus 13, if 38 is 3, if 42 is 18, that means what for... That means which all data they have given you. They have given you if 30 is nothing but minus 30. What does it mean? Means that at x equals 30. Okay. So y is minus 30. Because y is what? Y is fx. Or you can say here y is what? Y is f 30. The value of x is 30. So you can write here for simplicity you are writing down at x naught 30. Y naught is minus 30. Okay, similarly they have given you if 34 is minus 13, that means at x equals 34, okay, at x equals 34, y is minus 13 and you can write down that the, this instance is suppose x1 and then y1, fine. So in this way we will be writing down four values, okay, now what they are asking, now they are saying that find a root of the equation, you have to find the root of the equation, that means you have to find the value of x. You have to find the value of x. That value should satisfy this equation. The value which will satisfy the equation. That means that means on that value y will be 0. You can see that fx is 0. So they have given you the value of y which is 0. You have to find the value of x so that y is 0. That means you are that means you have to find what is x. So to find the value of y, we go for Lagrange's interpolation formula and to find the value of x, we go for Lagrange's inverse formula. Okay, no. So Lagrange's inverse formula is exactly same way how we have to write Lagrange's, uh, Lagrange's interpolation formula. Just you have to replace x with y. Okay, this question I have taken for the same reason because if they had given you this data, it was quite easy. But sometimes they ask the question in little different way also. So we should be knowing that what they are asking. So this way this is quite easy right now what they are asking here. They are saying that at x equals 30, y is minus 30 and so on. Total 4 values they have given. That means total 4 data sets are given. Now they are asking that at y equals 0, what is your x? Fine. So if you have to find x, then write down the left hand side x. Don't write y. Write down x here. x equals now. How many terms will be there in your formula? So there are four data sets, correct? No, first data set, second, third, fourth. Four data sets are there. You will be having four terms, okay, in your formula because four data sets are given, okay? And each data set will be having numerator and denominator both, fine, no? So again, we will be writing down the same thing. We will be writing down y minus y, y minus y, y minus y, but how many times you will be writing down y minus y? It depends on yn. What is your yn? yn is y3. That means n is 3. So total 3 times we are writing y minus y in the numerator also, in the denominator also. And then here we will be writing down uh, x, but it depends that what will be the value of x. So very first term is there, so x0. So we are writing down here x0. Okay. And now, x0 if I am writing here so it will be your what y0 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 and then then this and then the same thing this will be your y minus y1 y minus y2 y minus y3 similarly y1 minus similarly y0 minus y1 y0 minus y2 and then y0 minus y3 okay same way we are writing down in all four terms it will be y minus y in numerator also in denominator also okay and then we will be writing down here what x1 x0 is done so x1 if it is your x1 so it will be your y1 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 
and in the numerator don't write y1 you start with y0 and then y2 y3 right y0 y2 y3 and same way we are going to write okay fine and once we have written down this formula correctly then we just have to put the values there i know y will be what y is your zero because you have to find the value of x at y equal zero so in all places y will be zero and all other values they have given you y not is given uh, x1 x not everything is given to you and then you just have to put all those values fine you have put the values and then do the calculation using calculator and then you got x zero that means at y this x zero is what that means at y equal zero x is this was thirty seven. 0.2303. If okay, fine, and this value satisfies the given equation, right? So this is also called as root of the equation. So the appropriate root of f x equals zero is 37.2303. Okay. So if you find this class useful, please like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.